My name is Pat Chin and I'm from the CPF board. For the next 15 minutes or so, I'll be sharing with you on how CPF can provide us with a peace of mind when it comes to financing our healthcare needs for as long as we live. Let me start with a quick recap on what CPF is all about. Many of us are already familiar with CPF. It's a key pillar of Singapore's social security system designed to help us meet three basic and very important needs. The first one is to put a roof over our head. Many of us have used CPF to buy our homes, so we're familiar with this. And this has enabled about 90% of Singaporeans to own our own homes. I think this is very important because it means that we don't have to worry about paying for our housing renters when we are in our old age. I think the second important thing is that it provides us with some retirement income. So for example, under the CPF Life Scheme, your savings in the CPF retirement account will be streamed out to us on a monthly basis and for as long as we live. Again, to me, this is a very important thing because it greatly reduces our anxiety about how we can meet our daily expenses when we are old and have stopped working. And the third important need is, of course, how CPF can take care of our medical financing needs. This is the focus of our sharing and discussion today and I'll be elaborating on this in the next few slides. Okay, throughout the various stages of our life, and especially when we have grown old and have stopped working, we may be worrying continually about how we can finance our medical and healthcare needs for two main reasons. First is because Singaporeans are living longer on average. Life expectancy has gone up steadily over the last two decades. This means that we have more years to service our medical and healthcare needs after we have retired. The second reason is because uh, medical costs, like everything else, are subject to inflation. In fact, it is very possible that medic medical costs will go up faster and more than many other goods and services. So if you put these two things together, I think it's quite natural for us to be a bit more anxious, maybe to be a bit more concerned about how our medical expenses can be financed as we age, as we live longer. So in particular, what may we be worried about? I think there are three main things we could be worried about. Having to pay for large bills when we are hospitalized, having to pay for frequent treatments when we are struck with chronic illnesses like cancer or diabetes, and having to put up more money to, for our daily care expenses when and if we are unfortunately hit with severe disability. Really, in our golden years, we should be uh, enjoying the fruits of our labor rather than having to worry about uh, meeting our daily medical and care expenses. But just worrying won't solve the problem, right? So what can we do to reduce our anxieties and help us cope better? To me, there are two things we can do. One is to continually set aside and accumulate our savings for medical needs from the time we start work working and do this over many years. Two is protect ourselves against uncertainties like large medical bills, severe disability, through insurance protection. I think this two-pronged strategy sounds very simple and obvious, but as we all know, the simplest things are also often the hardest things to do. Because on our own, I don't think many of us will have the discipline to save regularly, consistently and adequately. And then on our own, it's also very difficult to afford effective insurance protection at affordable premiums. So this is where I think CPF can come in and help us. So let me share with you more details about three very important healthcare schemes administered by the CPF board to help us cope better. These are MediSafe, MediShield Life and CashShield Life. First, on MediSafe. Most of us are familiar with MediSafe to a certain extent. It is really our piggy bank for healthcare expenses. Through MediSafe, we accumulate savings when we are young, healthy and working. When working, we contribute between 8% and 10.5% of our monthly salary into MediSafe. The government helps by giving us top-ups such as those for PGMG from time to time and Importantly, giving us attractive risk-free interest rate of at least 4%. Our accumulated savings 
in the MediSafe account, enjoy compound interest at this attractive interest rate. And as we know, compound interest can work, work magic for us in growing our savings. And I think this is one of the reasons why some members voluntarily top up their MediSafe account. They can do so up to the basic healthcare sum or what we call the BHS, which is reviewed and adjusted annually. So we can then use our MediSafe savings to fund our healthcare needs. We can use them to pay for our healthcare insurance premium as well as a wide variety of medical expenses. From the cost of delivering our newborn to paying for treatments for our chronic illnesses to hospitalization stay, rehabilitative care and disability care and so on. The elderly will have a bit more flexibility on how they can use their MediSafe. Under the Flexi MediSafe scheme, they can use up to $300 per year for outpatient treatments. MediSafe withdrawal limits have also been set to ensure that they can cover most of the charges incurred for subsidized inpatient and outpatient treatments, as well as to ensure that our MediSafe savings would not be prematurely depleted. Next, MediShield Life. This is our national health insurance to help defray large hospital bills and some costly outpatient treatments like kidney dialysis, chemotherapy for cancer. All Singaporeans are auto-insured from the time they are born and for as long as they live under MediShield Life and importantly, regardless of their medical condition. So this is a very important point. It shows that MediShield Life is totally an inclusive scheme for all Singaporeans. Premiums for MediShield Life can be paid for using our MediSafe and we can also use our MediSafe to help pay the premiums of our fam family members. The government also provides significant support to keep premiums affordable, such as giving subsidies to PG, MG members and lower income family. And importantly, the MediShield Life benefits are designed and sized to pay for a significant portion of large medical bills incurred at heavily subsidized class B2C wards. So with MediShield Life, this means that we need to use less MediSafe and cash for our treatment bills at class B2C wards. So put together MediShield Life Insurance and our MediSafe, what we call the 2M system, they serve to keep what we need to come out in cash for out-of-pocket expenses to a very low level for subsidized patients. So when you're hospitalized and you are staying in class B2C wards, after government cuts, uh, subsidies kick in, after MediShield Life payout and after using your MediSafe, the vast majority of Singaporeans actually pay very little or no cash. For outpatient treatments, I think we are most worried about having to go for frequent treatments if we have chronic illnesses. Um, by chronic, it means that we also have the sick treatments over a long period of time. So what the uh, MOH has done is to allow for MediSafe to be used under the Chronic Disease Management Program. So under this CDMP, there's a list of about 23 chronic illnesses such as diabetes, stroke, heart disease, osteoporosis and so on. And we have set the MediSafe withdrawal limits such that you can largely rely on MediSafe for your chronic disease treatments. Just to add, um, patients who still might have difficulties with some cash uh, payment for your outstanding bills even after the 2M system, uh, you can always approach a medical social workers at the public healthcare institutions for further assistance. So I think if you consider these points, these two points, um, they are very important, which I want to reiterate is that with the 2M system, with the government subsidy, we can really have much greater assurance, much greater peace of mind about financing our basic healthcare needs. So you might ask, if government subsidy and the 2M system are sufficient to cover our stays in class B2C wards, do we still need to buy additional medical insurance or what is commonly known as an integrated shield plan, IP for short? I would say, consider carefully a few things, whether you need an IP or you want to buy an IP and what kind of IP to buy, because the IP premiums are not cheap. So for example, the first thing you should consider is what is the ward type you are likely to choose if you are hospitalized. Data shows that today, 
two out of three Singaporeans chose to stay in Class B2 C wards, which are heavily subsidised. And this includes some members who have already bought an IP. The second factor to consider is, of course, affordability. Take note that the private insurance premiums will rise significantly with age. They could be several times more than the MediShield Life premiums. And for those who buy riders, you need to pay even more for your riders. Take note also that uh, for IP premiums, you can only use your MediSafe up to the additional withdrawal limits or AWL. And for rider premiums, you cannot use MediSafe at all. Okay, so this means that for IP policy holders, many of us will have to pay a significant portion of our IP premiums in cash when we get older. So in summary, do your research, consider very carefully you know, your award preference, affordability especially, including whether you have to fork out cash and whether you can afford to fork out cash in your older ages before you think about buying an IP. Next, I'll talk about Cashew Life. We recently launched the Cashew Life scheme. It is a long-term care insurance scheme that provides some financial support for those who unfortunately become severely disabled. Why is Cashew Life important? Singapore's population is aging. In less than 10 years' time, one among four of us will be 65 or older. And one in two Singaporeans aged 65 could be severely disabled in their lifetime. Some of us are familiar with the Elder Shoes scheme, which was launched decades ago. So Cashew Life is really a vastly improved version of Elder Shoe. Both schemes will pay out on a monthly basis to those who cannot perform three out of six activities of daily living, such as toileting, washing, walking and transferring and so on. So who are those covered under Cashew Life? I think for those who are born in 1980 or later, you will be automatically insured under Cashew Life when you reach age 30. For elder shoe policy holders who are born between 1970 and 1979, you have already been auto-upgraded to Cashew Life. For those born earlier, whether you're on Cashew, whether you're already on elder shoe or not, you can also opt to join Cashew Life. And what is the main reason you might want to consider that? Well, because Cashew Life payouts are much more attractive than Elder Shoe payouts. Under Elder Shoe, you will get a payout of $300 or $400 per month for five to six years. Under Cashew Life, you get higher monthly payouts and you get this payout for as long as you remain severely disabled. The Cashew Life monthly payout started at $600 per month in year 2020 and the design of the scheme is such that every year, this payout will be increased by a certain percentage until the insured reach age 67 or has made a claim. And for those who join Cash Your Life by December next year, you will get some participation incentive, which will be spread out over 10 years to help offset some of your annual premiums. So depending on your age and whether you are a PG or MG member, the incentive ranges from $500 to $4,000 and the premiums can be fully paid with, Medi with MediSafe. This is my last slide. I hope that the presentation, although quite brief, have helped you to have a better understanding and clearer understanding of how CPF can partner you to give you a peace of mind on your medical financing needs, specifically on how schemes like MediSafe, MediShield Life, and CashU Life can work for you, and also how you can take charge by accumulating and saving for your future medical needs. And also, why you should do some research, make careful consideration to enable you to make smart and informed decisions before you buy an integrated shield plan. Thank you. Next up, for our exciting session, Johnny Kim, I have with me on site here, Ms. Lydia Lowe, the Director of Finance uh, Policy from the Ministry of Health. And um, yeah, let's start off with the very first question that we have already received from the Q&A. Our question from our audience who's watching us live is, you know, we've shared so much, right? And recently we also heard about this Healthier SG. So 
Um, what is this healthier SG all about? Maybe Lydia, <laughs> you could you could share with us more. Yeah, sure. I'll take this question. Um, so, Healthy SG is a new national initiative to help all Singaporeans take steps towards uh, better health, and the key emphasis is really uh, on preventive care. So, the broad concept is that each resident chooses a family doctor or a clinic, and um, you then can work with your family doctor to develop a personalized health plan. Um, for your care needs and you can work with this doctor to discuss your health goals throughout your life. Um, you could be encouraged to go for nationally recommended vaccinations and screenings um, and also if uh, you happen to have some chronic illnesses, um, then your family doctor can work with you to better take care of your chronic illness. Um, you might also be recommended or directed to participate in some healthy lifestyle activities mm -hmm. organized by community partners like People's Association mm. um, or Sports SG. So the enrollment to Healthy SG will start with those aged above 60, 60 for a start. One. Yeah. And that would start in the second half of uh, next, next year. year yeah. And then it will be gradually expanded to more and more uh, age cohorts subsequently. I see. Okay, so that's just a, a nutshell, very broad brief about Healthier SG. We're going to see more of this term and we're going to see more of the benefits of this term Healthier SG as well. So now, um, I want to dive deeper. Could you also share with us or maybe one of you share with us like what are the benefits of it mm, so under I'll, the scheme? I'll take a step at this. Yes. Um, so there are a couple of financial incentives available uh, for those residents who come forward to enroll with a doctor and come on board Healthier SG. Um, for instance, uh, you would be able to enjoy a free onboarding health consultation oh. um, as well as a free nationally recommended screenings and vaccinations. Do I hear the word free? Yes, that's not that, free. Have that many free things <laughs> in Singapore, but this yeah. is one of them. Free stuff. Um, yeah. You would also be able to use Medisafe to pay the full amount of treatment of some chronic illnesses under the CDMP program that Pachin had mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, um, instead of having to co-pay 15% of the bill in cash. Um, the prices of medicines at the GP clinics uh, that are part of Healthy Singapore mm -hmm. will also be lowered. There will be more subsidies provided so that it will be closer to those uh, at polyclinics. Mm. And lastly, there will be some rewards uh, uh, through um, HPB for enrolling, for completing the consultation and also participating in some of the, um, the healthy lifestyle activities. Uh, but I would like to emphasize that really the biggest benefit of all is actually being able to better take care of your health and have long and healthy lives. Um, and in my view, that cannot be measured by dollars and cents. Definitely, definitely. But of course, um, you know, by sharing with us all the exciting benefits of Healthy SG, I think this is uh, what will benefit Singaporeans on the whole. It sounds very exciting. There's more things coming. Really excited about the next quarter of the uh, 2023. Now, I'm going to throw back my question to Pachi next. Okay, so I'm um, planning towards the retirement. There may be a concern of not enough, not saving enough for the healthcare needs. There's always this concern, right? Because you know, with the, the current situation and um, maybe inflation and recession, there are always these questions at the top of Singaporeans' mind. So there's a question of not having enough, not saving enough for the healthcare needs. My question to you is, how then do we know that you know we have saved enough? for the healthcare savings in our retirement? Oh, thank you, Charlene. That, mm. That's Tough a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, for a start, you can use the basic healthcare sum uh, as a benchmark, as a guide. Okay. Um, the basic healthcare sum, or what is called BHS, is the estimated amount of savings that you need in your CPF to finance your basic subsidized medical needs mm. in your old age. So the BHS is reviewed and adjusted every year to, to take into consideration changing healthcare trends, medical inflation and so on. And it will be fixed when you hit age 65 and remain so for the rest of your life. So use that as a, as a sort of a benchmark mm -hmm. to, to accumulate your savings too. And uh, there are a few other things that we, we may be able to do. For example, when we're young, healthy and working, if the medical bills are not large, you may want to use cash instead of Medisafe. Then you let your Medisafe savings earn a compound interest, you know, yeah, in a Medisafe account. Mm -hmm. Or in good times when you get bonuses, 
yeah. or from time to time, just do some top up into your Medisafe accounts. Uh, that's a very, very sound advice. You know, good times, you can always top it up, you know. And when you're still younger, you can always use your cash instead and then save the Medisafe for later on and while it compounds on the interest. Okay, smart tip here. It's all about being savvy. That's why this session is all about digging the brains of the experts who are here with us. Okay, so next, let us dive in into the MediShield Live. Now, the MediShield Live that you have actually uh, presented earlier on about the uh, co-payment that's required. So, um, there's this question, why must I fork out cash for hospitalization bill even though I already have this MediShield Live? So, can you enlighten us on this? Who are you going to ask? Are you going to ask me again? Yes, <laughs> on MediShield, you're the expert. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess you are, you are asking about uh, the need to make co-payment. When yeah, we, because uh, you know, a lot of Singaporeans have this question. Right. Right? I, I've got MediSafe, I've got MediShield okay. Live, and I've got CashShield Live. Why must I still fork out? Why okay. is that co-payment? Right. Yeah. So, so there are two elements in, in a co-payment. Mm. The first is uh, co-insurance. Co-insurance means you fork out a certain amount of cash or mm. MediSafe mm. to, to pay for the uh, prorated um, percentage of your bills. Co-insurance is a um, very important and essential principle and a common feature in the design of uh, all healthcare insurance schemes. It encourages the doctors and the patients um, to be prudent in the consumption of the medical services so that um, you don't over-consume, the doctors don't prescribe unnecessary treatments okay. because when you do that, one, one of the consideration or well, one of the possibilities is that medical costs may be inflated, may become inflated. Yeah, so the other, the other component of uh, co-payment is really deductible. Deductible is a certain fixed amount of money uh, that we have to pay before you can make a claim on your insurance fund. Mm. For those who drive cars, you know, it's just like the excess amount yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before you make an insurance claim. Deductible is also very important because um, it keeps the, the insurance fund only for very large medical bills so that you don't again wither away the, the sustainability of the fund when these things happen you know when you have a uh, medical inflation due to unnecessary consumption or overconsumption of medical services or when you have a lot of a uh, small small um, medical bills to be claimed under an insurance fund what happens is that premiums will definitely have to go up, go up yeah. and go up at a very fast rate Mm. So the purpose of co-payment is therefore to make sure that our premiums remain affordable. Affordable, that's right, that's right. So we talk about the, the deductible and the co-payment, right? Yeah, that's necessary. So on the average, I think um, it really depends, like MediShield Life and also like the MediSafe together can pay about 90% of the uh, what bills? Yeah, that's correct. I was just going to add on that mm. the deductible and the co-insurance part of MediShield Life actually can be paid through MediSafe as well. And mm. together, MediShield Life and MediSafe Safe can cover about 90% of uh, subsidized views. So now, I have the next question in, uh, coming in from the crowd. It's like, why should I upgrade the MediShield Life? Yeah. Yeah, I do see quite a number of questions mm. around the same topic, same which topic, is whether right? or not, yeah, whether or not uh, we should upgrade my medical upgrade. life, whether or not integrated shoe plan is necessary. Mm. So I'll take that together. Sure. Um, so as uh, Park Chin uh, mentioned in his presentation, medical life really is meant to provide basic hospitalization coverage as well as for uh, very large outpatient bills. Um, it is sized and designed to be sufficient for subsidized healthcare bills. Um, so it is possible to upgrade in a sense and buy an integrated shoe plan and that provides additional coverage above what many shoe life provides so for instance to get cover for class a ward in the public hospital or in the private hospital like more premium yes yeah yeah so i was going to make the point that of course you know nothing comes free yes. <laughs> except for nationally recommended National, yeah. vaccinations <laughs> um, so this additional coverage from ip plans also comes with higher premiums Premium. Um, and as Prachin mentioned, uh, the premiums of this uh, uh, integrated shoe plans, some of it's payable by MediSafe up to a certain withdrawal limit. Mm -hmm. But then um, uh, as, you, uh, as you age, the premiums get higher and the excess part would have to be paid in cash. And that can be quite uh, difficult for some, some members. Um, so my advice is I wouldn't be able to give uh, cross like, sort of broad-based advice to everybody who's mm. asking whether or not they should buy or they shouldn't. It's not a cookie um, cutter. It's not a cookie yeah. cutter, but I would say my advice would be to consider um, both your preferences in terms of your coverage. Are you particular about 
a ward class, for instance, um, and also whether you can afford your premiums at older ages, um, as the premiums always increase actually very sharply oh, with wow. age. So it's worthwhile um, uh, looking at the premium trajectory when you are That's making the right. decision. That's right. Okay. Just look at your current needs. What do you want and what do you truly need? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Anything to add on, Hachin? Yes, I would just want to add, you know, mm. even if you choose a heavily subsidized class B2 yes. or C wards, be, sure, be assured that you will still continue to receive very high quality medical care. Of course, that, that is without a question of a doubt in Singapore. We always give very quality health care, okay? So, yes, thank you for chiming in on that, okay? So, um, I have a question for you, Lydia. So, if I already have like a MediSafe, and also, I have many shield life, both of them. So, why? Why do I still need the care shield life? Even though I think early on, Pachin has uh, made a very good, uh, you know, presentation on this. But I think uh, some people might still have this very vague concept about very safe, very shield life, care shield life. So, if I already have them, why do I still need another care shield life? So they're quite complementary in a way. Yeah. Um, Cash Life and Medishun Life are different insurance schemes. Mm -hmm. Medishun Life covers large hospital bills and um, out outpatient expenses like chemo, dialysis, etc. Whereas Cash Life is what we call a long-term care insurance. Um, it provides uh, coverage uh, uh, um, and protection for very basic long-term care needs mm -hmm. uh, and provides uh, monthly cash payouts in the event of uh, severe disability. So we do have this statistic that shows that one in two Singaporeans at age 65 mm -hmm. may face severe disability in their lifetime. Um, so this is not really a, a very low probability event. Mm. It's something that we need to consider and to plan for in advance. Yes. Um, so in such an unfortunate event, uh, one may require caregiving assistance in your activities of daily living, such as feeding, dressing, toileting. Um, and then cash in life comes in because it will provide monthly cash payouts that can help to offset some of these long-term care costs. Indeed, because this is for like um, any Singaporeans, right, who might have this uh, disability. But now the statistics is quite high. We cannot ignore that kind of probability. So therefore, we have this cash flow life. And the best thing is, it's a monthly payout. That's so right. you can offset all these expenses and all these worries, financial worries and stress. So we, we love to take care of that. So that's why that's the difference between like care shield life and medi shield life. We'll be able to take care of more things, you yes, know, yes. under the uh, care shield life in a nutshell. Okay. So now going to the um, Q and A questions because we have so many of them coming in like snowflakes. I think we should take some time to answer each and every one of them. Okay, shall we? So now now let's go to uh, the other. Uh, questions here uh, this one has got the most number of votes let's go for this question first I am a pioneer who have finished paying elder shield should I convert to care shield life actually we, we kind of like touch on this early on Patrin right so mm. maybe you can reiterate to, to this uh, viewer he's a pioneer obviously sure um, I'll just reiterate I mean mm. the probability of someone who is healthy at age 65 today <laughs> becoming mm. severely disabled in their lifetime is one in two. It's one in two. <laughs> one so two. it's, it's yep. pretty high if you ask me. Yeah. I think even if you are if fully paid up on Elder Shield, Elder Shield. Mm. Uh, you want to make a serious consideration to mm. join Cash, cash Your Life. Shield. Of course, you have to pay some top-up premiums because mm. uh, uh, um, Cash Your Life premiums and Elder Shield premiums are different. But there will be participation incentive to help to offset some of the uh, uh, premiums you need to pay. And... Um, if you are still not severely disabled, mm -hmm. that sort of uh, make you eligible to make this consideration to join mm. Cash Your Life. Mm. Maybe I'll just add on. Yes, um, I would say that Cash Your Life's coverage is significantly better than mm. Elder Shoe uh, because of uh, it's, it has lifetime payouts, whereas Elder Shoe, I think, it's kept by either five or six years, depending on which plan you have. And also, the amount is also uh, quite significantly larger. It's about at least $600, and it's going to increase every year from now. Um, whereas uh, Elder Shoe is either 300 or 400 mm -hmm. So it's really quite a significant um, increase in, in, in the benefit. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, I would really suggest that you consider uh, um, upgrading to Cash in Life. And I just wanted to add that uh, the, the premiums that you have paid for Elder Shoe will be taken into consideration. So it's not wasted. We will take that into consideration in pricing the Cash in Life premiums. Mm -hmm. um, so in a sense, uh, that's, you just pay, up a, a, you just pay a, a slight top up. Yes. That. Yes. Uh, so maybe I, I just add something. Yes. I mean, uh, for those who are really interested, please uh, go to the Cash Your Life website. 
<laughs> yeah, there's a personalized calculator to help right. you uh, wow. project your premiums for the next few years. Yeah. So you just go in, lock in with your SingPass and uh, details, and uh, you you see the expected premiums for the next few years. See, we make it so easy for you guys to be converted because you know no amount of words would convince you. By you punching in the numbers, you will be able to see that oh, I just need to top up this uh, minimal amount, and yet I can have a comprehensive coverage. Mm -hmm. Because I think the key words here is like just what Lydia has mentioned. It covers so much more than uh, Elder Shield, right? So it's a more comprehensive um, coverage. That's one thing, and very importantly, it's a life. You know, it take care for for you for life. And the next it's just a minimum top up. So I think these three points would be sufficient to make you convince yourself to like just go for the uh, MediShield life. But if you're not convinced, go ahead and punch the numbers at our calculator, okay? And there are additional incentives from the government. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, ex no, we just incentivize you along the way, okay? So four points and then punch your calculator later on. <laughs> okay, so our next question, moving on to our next question. I have enhanced IP with rider insurance, right? And can I opt for a class? for a less costly operation like cataract and subsequently opt for um, what B, B2 and C for larger surgery bill. Well, a bit complicated. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a bit difficult to uh, give advice. Uh, uh, based on the what? Yeah, based on, based on uh, just a short description of mm. the circumstance. But in general, you always have the choice uh, to opt for a subsidized ward. Yeah. If it's a matter of referral, then there's a process uh, to take place. You need a referral to a uh, through a polyclinic or through some other um, you know, doctor. doctor. Yeah, exactly, yeah. to get to the subsidized mm. ward. But if it's a fresh new condition, mm. then you always have the choice. Whatever you have uh, in terms of insurance, mm -hmm. you always have a choice to opt for a subsidized ward. Mm. Okay, that's for you who have already purchased the IP, okay? Alright, so our next question moving on. There's so many questions, we got to go a bit faster. Is it necessary to buy rider for MediShield? Um, example, like minimum cash portion to pay. Is there any minimum portion of cash to pay? for the MediShield necessary to buy a rider? Uh, maybe I'll take that question. Mm. I think Good in the first place, uh, <laughs> there, there's no such thing as uh, buying a rider for MediShield Medi Life. Yeah. MediShield Life is already a universal basic insurance and uh, you don't really need a rider. Like what the leader said earlier, mm. you know, some of the co-payments, you can use cash or you can even use MediSafe to help put your co-payments. Okay, so that answers your question. Very easy question. Okay, next question is what to consider when one wishes to downgrade IP from private to public hospitals? Lydia? Yeah, so I think it will be the reverse of what we said just yeah. now about buying IP. So if you wish to downgrade IP from uh, private to public hospitals, mm. what that would mean is that uh, you would be, uh, uh, the coverage will be more for the public hospitals and may not be for private hospitals. Um, so that would mean that you have to consider your own preferences, uh, your coverage preferences, mm. and also consider the premium changes. I mean, if you downgrade your IP plan, then the premiums will also go down. Yes, that's right. So um, up to your current uh, financial uh, situation, yes. if you're able to, you know, um, just do a bit of planning. That's why we're all here to help you plan better. Okay, next, well, for Pat Chin, this question is particularly for Pat Chin. Does CPF provide advisory support or service on how to choose the various options like for Medish uh, MediSafe, MediShield Life, and CareShield Life? Hmm. Okay, um, I don't think you need to make, make an option, any options when you, when you choose a MediSafe or MediShield Life because these, these are compulsory schemes. And for certain cohorts, CareShield Life are also, is also a compulsory scheme. Mm. Uh, when you, when you need to choose uh, whether to join Cash You Live, I think it's more for the older cohorts, as, mm. uh, regardless 1980 of 1980 onwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah even before Not I did <laughs> Not that old. Okay. Yeah. Regardless <laughs> okay. of whether you're already on uh, Elder Shield. Otherwise, uh, it's just uh, trying to find out uh, factual information. What, does, uh, what you can use your MediSafe to pay for, what are the claim limits under MediShield Live, and all these are available on the uh, CPF website. And, I think as well as MOH website. Mm, that's right, okay. And also, I think uh, uh, for Singaporeans, uh, most of us would also have our own um, FA. So you could speak to your FA about you know, certain questions. They are all very well versed in like MediSafe, MediShield Life, and CareShield Life. They will be able to advise you on the options that you could use if uh, pertaining to um, claiming if you want to use it for certain surgeries or operations. Not just us, MOH and also CPF will be here to support you with your any, any questions you may have. Okay, so now 
Next up, this question is particularly directed to Delaney Alidia. So the question says like, what are the key considerations when selecting an integrated plan? And also the part two is, how factors, uh, what factors should we consider to ensure that this plan is adequate and not over-insured? Yeah, mm. thanks. Part um, one, part one. <laughs> I, uh, I think it's really still back to the same two factors, uh, which is about coverage preferences and mm. premium affordability. Yeah. Um, but if you are, um, if you are considering selecting an uh, integrated shield plan, uh, there are various, um, th even integrated shield plans, there are various uh, tiers as well. Mm -hmm. You know, some are for public hospitals, some are for private hospitals. Um, so that's also something to consider. Uh, the premiums can be quite different. Um, I mentioned earlier that you should consider premiums not just currently, but also in a longer term trajectory, okay. especially when you get older. Um, and maybe the last point that I'll add is that uh, there is some information on the MOH website when, uh, to compare the uh, benefits and the coverage and the premiums of the different uh, IP providers. Mm -hmm. So that might be something that you can also look at to, to compare um, uh, among, among the plans that are available mm -hmm. in the market. It's actually quite transparent right now. So mm -hmm. you could have all the information from the MOH website. So once again, it's really um, considering your situation and trajectory in the future, whether you, you do need a, a more premium coverage or not. Yeah. yeah. Pachin, you seem yeah. to have something to add. Yeah, maybe I'll just add. Uh, a lot of information uh, is available on various websites for, mm -hmm. for, for us to do the research ourselves. So I think uh, I did a quick check recently. You know, um, so for... IP premiums, the private insurance part of the IP premiums, when you are at age 70, it can be between about two to almost four times the MediShield Life premiums. MediShield Life premium at age 70 is 1.1k, and that is before government subsidy. With government subsidy, is less. So IP premium at age 70 can be about two to almost four times. And at age 80, it can be between three to five times the MediShield Life premium. So the premiums really go up quite significantly at older ages. I think this is something that uh, we should be aware of before we consider whether we want to buy an uh, integrated shoe plan. Yes, IP. And uh, don't forget, uh, if you are buying rider, the mm. order of magnitude for the rider premium is about the same as the mm. private uh, insurance premium. So you are going, going to have to pay a lot more as well. Yeah, that, that's the, the thing, you know, sometimes we don't know what we are buying. <laughs> and then our, our FA will tell us, oh, just buy, just buy, it's good for you, it's good for you. Mm. But sometimes you really need to um, research a little, a, yes. a little bit more because just like what Pachina said, all the information is all on the internet, it's on our website. So you just go and take a look, do a bit of research, find out more about yourself, uh, about all these plans that you are looking for before you even commit. Yeah, or speak to someone much later on, okay? So uh, Pachin, it's also there's another question for you. Is there a cap to top out the MediSafe just like, you know, RA? Oh yes, uh, I mentioned the basic healthcare sum. That is actually the cap you can top up your MediSafe savings to. If I remember correctly, it's about 66,000 this mm. year. This year. And, uh, this will, uh, the BHS will be reviewed and adjusted annually. Mm. Okay, so there's a max. I know that sometimes uh, we just want to do the top up because it's actually good for us in the, in the future with this compound interest going on. But there is a cap of $66,000, okay, folks? So do remember that magical figure. Now, um, back to Lydia. From our audience, our viewers, they have a question for you. And the question is, is the care shield life enough for healthcare needs? For those born after 1980, you're advocated for the 1980 era and, and beyond. <laughs> okay, do I still need to buy like additional insurance if I'm not particular about the ward types and ward grades? Maybe just the first question first, right? So like, is it, is, is it enough or not for how can it's for those born after 1980? So I think that there might be a bit of a misconception which I need to clear up. Mm. Um, so Cash in Life is a long-term care insurance and it provides monthly cash payouts um, in the event of severe disability. disability so yeah. it's nothing to do with the ward grades mm. at all. Um, the question might be asking whether medishoe life is, is it enough? enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would say that medishoe life is sized to be enough for uh, subsidized care. So if you are not particular about ward grades and you are happy to, um, to choose subsidized care, then the answer is that uh, medishoe life should be enough to cover you. Mm. Yes, and then I think uh, the, the care shield life is enough to cover for everyone. Because we're auto-included if you're 1980 and, and, and later. Yeah. 
and older. Cash yeah. life is for long-term care. Yeah, cash yeah. life is for yeah. long-term care. Yeah, so it's, we're all auto-included in that if, if you're born 1980 and beyond, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so thank you so much for your questions. There's more coming. Let's take the question one by one, okay? Next question. I am on Elder Shield 400. So should I join CareShield? Because premium is not as cheap as using MediSafe. Okay, this is a very specific question. So if very sick, then don't live beyond five years. Can you comment? What well, very specific question here. I think, um, Pachin. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we've answered uh, these questions before. You know, elder uh, cash you live because the benefits are better. So obviously mm. the premiums will be uh, higher. Yeah. But uh, even then, I think it has been sized to be a quite affordable still because it can still be paid with your MediSafe. Mm. Um, and in order to enjoy some incentives, join before December 2023. Mm. Um, you don't have to pay your cash your life annual premium for life. You only pay up to age 67, right? Or 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, age 67. That's where you need to pay your annual premiums up to generally. And uh, then you'll be covered for the rest of your life as well. Mm. So if I give you an example, um, someone in the 50s today on Elder Shoe, um, Maybe the premium before government subsidy today is about five hundred over dollars per year. Elder mm. Shield is maybe hundred, close to two hundred. Um, but if you look at five hundred dollars, it's um, maybe uh, fifty dollars per month or less. So it's quite affordable. And uh, if you consider the the probability of uh, getting disabled, um, you consider the the much improved payouts as well as the payout you enjoy for life. Mm. I think it's something that you probably want to again go to the Cashulai website, crunch your numbers, crunch your details, you know, and, and see the premiums for yourself. Mm. It's quite affordable still. I just wanted to add a comment about um, whether or not uh, if there is a, a severe disability um, that the remaining lifespan would be very short. Um, so actually, that's not always the that's not always the case. Uh, there can be some conditions where even um, uh, with severe disability, you can you can be alive for quite quite a while, mm -hmm. and that's where long term care. That's why we call it long term yes. care, right? Comes into play. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and uh, there are um, the, so support from cash on life to support that. Uh, increased expenses would be very useful. That's true because I think the part two of the question um, is very specific. They say that if you're very, very sick and then probably you don't live beyond the next five years. So I think this particular viewer has some concerns. So what Lydia said is true. Like, you know, what what if um, it's maybe you live beyond this five years and maybe sometimes the complications kicks in and then you do become like severely disabled and then that's where care shield life can really help you so and add on to what Pachin has mentioned the premium it's uh, if you just break it down to per month it's really very affordable so let's just really um, plan for the worst you know but you don't just stay for rainy days and right now I think care shield life is very affordable uh, just go for it I think uh, the sound advice is just to use it because it covers uh, more areas it's more comprehensive okay so don't worry about it next question that we have from our audience who's watching us live is to manage healthcare costs should we go to a polyclinic or neighborhood clinic this is a question that uh, very very generic but yeah let's hear from the, the floor what's your idea like which one would you go for I would go for a healthier SG, <laughs> <laughs> which can be both polyclinic yeah. or a GP. Um, so either way, it should be uh, it should be very similar. Um, the the drug prices will be uh, similar. The medicine price will be similar in in two in the two uh, uh, settings, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the care provided will also be be of quality care. Yes, Pachin, same answer. Well, I mean, um, if you go to Polyclinics, obviously, you get get uh, outright uh, subs subsidies for your treatments. I think if you're a CHAS card holder, you're a pioneer mm. yeah, that's right. uh, generation yeah. as well. If you, even if you go to your neighborhood clinics, I think you'll get a substantial amount of uh, discounts as well. So it really depends on your convenience as well as uh, and whether you're holding some CHAS card or mm. whether you're a pioneer yeah. generation. Yeah, Sometimes it's much more convenient for a PG member just to go down to the neighborhood yeah. clinic. Exactly. It's a exactly. Great, great point. I was yeah. going to just add on that uh, uh, clinics where you are... Uh, 
your your able to yeah that 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 has charged um subsidies also uh, that's where you can also use the medisafe. Mm. That's true. Okay. So um there's no fast and hard rules. I think at the at the top of nine they will always think that oh our polyclinics are cheaper, so I should go there. But then again you have charge cards, you know, it, it will help you. And for members, um elder members, you don't really want to travel that far around you. We got healthier SG clinics as well, so go to them. Mm. Thank you. Um good question on that. Okay. So next question is is there a cap on the MediSafe one can use to pay for insurance. Example of MediShield Life, CareShield Life. Great question. So I'll take that one. Yes. Um, <laughs> so for MediShield Life and CareShield Life, the national insurance uh, schemes, uh, the premiums can be completely paid through MediSafe as long as we have balances. Uh, it's only for the private insurance um, uh, options on top of that. So the integrated shoe plans for MediShield Life and uh, for Cash Life, we have what we call supplements, um, additional uh, private insurance components. Those you can only pay uh, from your MediSafe up to a certain withdrawal limit. Good, good take on that. Okay, so now we have time for a final question. I know all of you have a lot of burning questions coming in, right? Um, in the essence of time, let's take the one last question. I will ask both Lydia as well as Pachin to share with us on this. Okay, this is a great question from our viewer. Is the current MediSafe sufficient for the future medical care cost? Okay, that's part one. Part two is like, how can CPF help to enhance the members' accounts? Wow, okay, this person seems to know a bit, but love to know more so <laughs> like right now maybe patching and share with us like is the current medisafe sufficient for the future medicare costs future is always increasing right the medicare yeah. the healthcare cost yeah. so i mentioned about the basic healthcare sum earlier mm. the bhs uh, so that is the estimated amount of savings that we think we might uh, all members might need to have in the should have in the medisafe account right. precisely take care of their future medical needs mm -hmm. for as long as they live in the old age um, it has been sized and uh, will be reviewed and adjusted annually um, up to uh, when a person reaches age 65, then it remain constant because I mean, after you stop working, uh, it might be a bit harder to, to keep contributing to your MediSafe. Um, so the annual review will take care of uh, medical trends, you know, whether there are, there are mm. new, new trends in terms of uh, disease uh, prevalence, you know, new technologies, new treatments and the cost of the new treatments take care of our medical inflation. It's the best estimate we can do, really. Um, um, so how we can help to enhance a member's uh, savings in the account, like I said, you know, I mean, uh, there's no such thing as a feast of famine. We give risk-free interest rate at a very attractive <laughs> rate, you know, 4% at least in the MediSafe account. So it's really a good uh, bank for you to put your money, accumulate your money so when you're working, when you're healthy, mm. and uh, when you can save and uh, enjoy compound interest. Mm. Yes, Lydia, you have something to add? Yeah, I'll just add, um, so I'll sort of turn the question back uh, as well and mm. to see, to say that maybe we can also consider how can we reduce our own future healthcare costs. Mm. And that actually really is what Health SG is all about, um, to emphasize preventive care, um, taking care of your health uh, early in your life and not only at the end when, it's, uh, when you're already struck with illness, um, better management of your chronic diseases so you can avoid even more costly uh, healthcare bills subsequently. And that is what it's really all about. Um, so that you save, but you also take care of your health. That's right. So uh, I know all of you are really interested to know more about Healthy SG. We love to share with you more. But in the essence of time, I think uh, our, our experts have done their very best to, to give you all the um, essence of what this is all about in a nutshell in, the, in a half an hour. But of course, to know more information, just like what Patrick has said, you know, it's always on our website. So go to our website, uh, MOH, as well as CPF Board. We have all the information there so where you could take this this afternoon to digest them all okay if you do have any questions we always have a live chat button there we always have a hotline we are always here to assist to help okay so thank you so much Pachin as well as Lydia for sharing with us it has been such an enriching session I know you guys cannot clap because you're watching us uh, virtually all right so you can type a thank you you know or just uh, say thank you to to both of them for me I'll just clap on your behalf thank you very much <laughs> Lydia as Welcome. well as uh, thank Pachin you for joining for us yep. yes yes we 
we love to have them for extended versions uh, and longer <laughs> versions as well because there's so many things uh, pertaining to the healthy SG mm -hmm. as well as you know the uh, MediSafe, MediShield Life and also CareShield Life. There's so many things that we want to know about the healthcare and how we can better prepare ourselves for the future. But I think uh, they have done a great job in that. Thank you so much for the enriching session.